But anyway, each of the fermions also has an antiparticle. It's sort of a mirror image particle, like a pair um, partner, basically. And this is an antiparticle. The anti, so this is not to be uh, confused with the super symmetry, super partner particle that particles may also have, which is what the concept of supersymmetry um, theorizes, but this is antiparticle. This is well within the realms of standard model of particle physics, okay? So for example, electron antiparticle is positron, and that's been seen. It's a thing, it's, a, it's definitely possible in nature to have a positron. There are more uh, processes that make electrons than do positrons. So we have more electrons generally than positrons, but antiparticles are nothing so bad, nothing too exotic or weird. Just a, just a partner of, of these particles, okay? The antiparticle of the electron is a positron. There are also anti-quarks and anti-neutrinos. So sometimes within a particle physics interaction a reaction process thing, you might basically, you might get out the particle or its antiparticle, uh, but the flavor would be one of those flavors that we just talked about. Like it could be an electron, a muon, or a tau, or it could be an anti-electron, an anti-muon, or an anti uh, tau, uh, where if it's an anti-electron, we would just call it a positron, or it could be a neutrino that's involved somewhere in some process. But actually, when it does um, something, it becomes an, what comes out is an anti-neutrino. For example, you might see sometimes it's uh, denoted with like a bar on top of the symbol, okay? The theory of QED describes interactions between the charged fermions. Right, so quantum electrodynamics, of course, we're talking about electrodynamics or electromagnetism um, with quantum mechanics included. 